Two Military Executions by Ambrose Bierce. In the spring of the year 1862, General Buell's big army lay in camp, licking itself into shape for the campaign which resulted in the victory at Shiloh. It was a raw, untrained army, although some of its fractions had seen hard enough service with a good deal of fighting in the mountains of western Virginia and in Kentucky. The war was young and soldiering a new industry, imperfectly understood by the young American of the period, who found some features of it not altogether to his liking. Chief among these was that essential part of discipline, subordination. To one imbued from infancy with the fascinating fallacy that all men are born equal, unquestioning submission to authority is not easily mastered. And the American volunteer, in his green and salad days, is among the worst known. That is how it happened that one of Buell's men, Private Bennett Story Green, committed the indiscretion of striking his officer. Later in the war, he would not have done that. Like Sir Andrew Agucheek, he would have seen him damned first. But time for reformation of his military manners was denied him. He was promptly arrested on complaint of the officer, tried by court-martial, and sentenced to be shot. You might have thrashed me and let it go at that, said the condemned man to the complaining witness. That is what you used to do at school when you were plain Will Dudley and I was as good as you. Nobody saw me strike you. Discipline would not have suffered much. Ben Green, I guess you're right about that, said the lieutenant. Will you forgive me? That is what I came to see you about. There was no reply, and an officer putting his head in at the door of the guard tent where the conversation had occurred explained that the time allowed for the interview had expired. The next morning, when in the presence of the whole brigade, Private Green was shot to death by a squad of his comrades, and Lieutenant Dudley turned his back upon the sorry performance and muttered a prayer for mercy, in which he himself was included. A few weeks afterward, as Buell's leading division was being ferried over the Tennessee River to assist in succoring Grant's beaten army, night was coming on, black and stormy. Through the wreck of battle, the division moved, inch by inch, in the direction of the enemy, who had withdrawn a little to reform his lines. But for the lightning, the darkness was absolute. Never for a moment did it cease, and ever when the thunder did not crack and roar, were heard the moans of the wounded among whom the men felt their way with their feet, and upon whom they stumbled in the gloom. The dead were there, too. There were dead aplenty. In the first faint gray of the morning, when the swarming advance had paused to resume something of definition as a line of battle, and skirmishers had been thrown forward, word was passed along to call the roll. The first sergeant of Lieutenant Dudley's company stepped to the front and began to name the men in alphabetical order. He had no written roll, but a good memory. The men answered to their names as he ran down the alphabet to G. Gorham, here. Greyrock. Here, the sergeant's good memory was affected by habit. Green, here. The response was clear, distinct, unmistakable. A sudden movement and agitation of the entire company front as from an electric shock attested the startling character of the incident. The sergeant paled and paused. The captain strode quickly to his side and said sharply, Call that name again. Apparently, the Society for Psychical Research is not first in the field of curiosity concerning the unknown. Bennett Green? Here. All faces turned in the direction of the familiar voice. The two men between whom the order of stature Green had commonly stood in line turned and squarely confronted each other. Once more, commanded the inexorable investigator, and once more came, a trifle tremulously, the name of the dead man. Bennett Story Green. Here. Well, at that instant, a single rifle shot was heard away to the front beyond the skirmish line, followed almost attended by the savage hiss of an approaching bullet, which, passing through the line, struck audibly, punctuating as with a full stop the captain's exclamation, What the devil does it mean? Lieutenant Dudley pushed through the ranks from his place in the rear. It means this, he said, throwing open his coat, and displaying a visibly broadening stain of crimson on his breast. His knees gave way. He fell awkwardly 
and lay dead. A little later, the regiment was ordered out of line to relieve the congested front, and through some misplay in the game of battle, was not again under fire. Nor did Bennett Green, expert in military executions, ever again signify his presence at one.